Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to my kitchen where we make fun, feel-good recipes that connect us all. Today, I want you to up your risotto game to the pro level with a delicious asparagus green pea risotto that has a heavy comfort food factor. Let's get started. I want to draw your attention to the back burner. Everything is going to happen here on my stove today. I've got a little vegetable broth just coming to temperature on the back burner. What I love to use for risotto is a pot like this. It shouldn't be too deep and it shouldn't be too shallow. So I'm just going to put a little butter into that pan. And to that, I'm going to add a, a shallot. You can use an onion, a leek. Really, you need some sort of an what's called allium family, anything like this, to start developing flavor. I'm here over a moderate heat. I don't want to get too, too high a temperature going because really I want to just sweat these shallots. So let's talk about what are we going to do? How are we going to create flavor? So it is now season for beautiful asparagus. So what you want to do with asparagus is just sort of break it with your hand naturally where it snaps. This part here is going to be woody, the bottom, so we get rid of that. Now, when I was in France, how we learned to deal with asparagus, the French are so precise. And ever since the time I spent cooking in France, I've been doing this. Some people think I'm crazy, but it's a game changer. Peeling asparagus. So I just lay it down flat like this, and I'm basically going to peel two thirds of that stalk of asparagus. Okay, by doing that, you get the beautiful, juicy, tender stalks, but you don't get that hard outer core, which can be really chewy. And now I just want to chop this up into probably whatever, an inch, half inch, whatever size we want like that. And this is going to be on standby. Okay, so I've got all my asparagus here. To the asparagus, I thought peas, peas and rice are such a beautiful combination. So I always say that I cook with all my senses. So now I can smell that the shallot is starting to release some of that sugar. At this point, I'm going to add the, uh, the garlic because I don't want the garlic to burn. So I'm going to add that now. It's like, it needs a little bit more butter at this point. I've only added about five grams. I'm restraining myself from the butter adding for a very important reason. There's going to be lots of butter being added afterwards, okay? So once that broth comes to a boil, what I'm opting to do here, because remember we're talking up your risotto to pro level, what I'm going to do is take my green veggies and I'm going to actually put them into the stock to simmer for about six or seven minutes. Season with a little bit of salt. Let's have a look at this while we're here. Just a teeny bit of color on that. And now it's time, because I don't want the garlic to burn at all, I'm going to add my beautiful rice. So I'm going here with, this is a short grain rice called Vialone Nano. I'll explain all about that, not to worry. Medium heat. I just want to enrobe each of these beautiful little grains with butter and just kind of toast it a bit to get a nutty flavor. So to make a great risotto, to me, you need three beautiful things that they have to be great quality. You need good quality rice, which this is. You need fat. Here I have in the form of butter and Parmigiano Reggiano. And you need some acid. The acid here is going to be in the form of white wine. And I want to just evaporate that liquid and the alcohol off. So now that they've kind of gone for about four or five minutes, I'm going to just remove those. Look at, you see what I'm saying? Is that saying spring to you? 
or what? That's what I wanted. So I have two rices that I love using for risotto. Carnaroli is probably my favorite. But I wanted to try this Vialone Nano. It's a bit more elongated and it's gonna give us a little less starchiness, so it's gonna be a looser risotto, which I absolutely love. Okay, we are just at the right point. So come and have a look in this pot and you're gonna see that all of that moisture has evaporated. So I have heavily concentrated flavor of white wine there. Acidity, fruitiness, fantastic but alcohol all gone. So it's important here, I'm gonna just take about a cup or so of that hot broth, and I'm just gonna mix it in with this rice, and then adjust my temperature. I want this to be kind of medium heat, maybe closer to low, but it has to be simmering. That bubble level right now is perfect. Now, you might be wondering, should I not be stirring this constantly? And here's the thing, you don't have to stir it constantly. You just wanna make sure that you keep it at the same temperature and you keep adding hot stock as the rice absorbs it because that's the beauty of this rice. It has the capacity to absorb a lot of moisture. And then you create the creaminess all at the end. Once you learn this, it's a revelation because it's not a tedious thing anymore. You don't have to be like, ah, ah, stirring, stirring, breaking a sweat to make a great risotto. You really don't. You're, trust me on this one, you're gonna be blown away. So you'll see here now, moisture has evaporated. So I'm just gonna add, again, about the same amount of simmering stock, keeping it at the same temperature. That's what I want to accomplish here. Okay, and then you never want it to stop simmering. That's going to give you the perfect temperature. So making sure to kind of adjust it. And you see those bubbles? That's perfect. Now, the timing of this, once you get the hang of it, is actually pretty great because this sort of a rice, the one I'm using, I know that the timing is probably 15 to 17 minutes. I think probably in the rest of the world, People tend to overcook risotto. A lot of people say, oh, it takes a half hour. This is only gonna take, really, 15 minutes at maximum. I have some beautiful tarragon from my garden. Look at how great that looks. Tarragon is fantastic with these spring greens. So I'm gonna just chop some of that up. I got some beautiful chives also from my garden. Chopping that ready. Anything, you can use parsley, any kind of feathery light herbs. I would add here. Oh, right away to me, that's fantastic. This is all washed too, the chives. Chives are gonna add that delicate light onion kind of freshness at the end. You could also add some basil, but that's gonna take it in another direction, but you can certainly do that. The interesting thing about this, so this is some Parmigiano Reggiano. Look at that piece of cheese, I mean, come on. The interesting thing about Parmigiano Reggiano is it has fat and it also has acid. Happens to also have glutamate, so umami. I wanna just grate some to have it all ready to go. So how do you get the timing and the texture just right? At the 14 minute mark, what I wanna do is taste it. It should be still a little bit kind of to the bite, a little bit more than al dente. And then that'll give me that window because when I, if I overshoot the runway, there's no going back, right? Oh, a little bit of a bite and I'm gonna just See this two spoon thing? This way you can put this in your mouth and you don't have to worry about double dipping. That's perfect. So now, come and have a look at this texture. 
What the Italians, a traditional, a beautiful risotto, needs to be what's called alonda, wavy. You don't want it to be a mound and thick. So look how this is now. What I'm anticipating is the final texture. So what I'm going to do here, add just a touch more broth, because now I'm in the finish. So what we want to do here, create that flavor, right? So guess what's going to happen now? Butter. This part is up to you. A lot of chefs really just mound it with a huge amount of butter. I'm not going to do that. But you do want, probably I would say to save 30, 40 grams of butter there. I'm going to go in with a good amount, again, I'm going to go in with a good amount of cheese. And at this point, I'm going to add back my crunchy, still beautiful green veggies. Going to go in. And this is where we do a little stirring. Do you see that already, that texture? Now I want to give it a little 30, 40 seconds over a higher kind of heat stirring. to create that creaminess, the butter, the cheese, bringing out the starch and the rice. Whoa. Okay, this is looking brilliant. The last thing I want to do is just give it a little bit of cracked black pepper. Yes, it's going to have a little fleck, but I like that. Then I'm going to add all of those herbs one shot. Just give it a little high temperature. So now it's rapidly boiling. I'm going to turn it right off. I'm going to put a lid on it. Two minutes. Say a prayer. Take a breath. Everybody get to the table. It's going to be good. Look at that. Because for those two minutes, it's still just in texture. I think people overdo it. That is perfect. I think you're going to love it. Who wants some risotto? Spring risotto. Okay, look at that. And how gorgeous those green veggies are. See how it just coats the plate. Should be a little creaminess in the bottom there. Now, the other thing is risotto should never be mounded. It's supposed to be served flat like this. See a little creaminess, juiciness. Look at those beautiful green veggies. Come on. Just before serving, I saved the best till last. The lemon. A little bit of lemon zest is really going to bring out that freshness of spring. Look at that. Oh, even the smelling of it is so great. And I had these amazing little blossoms from my chive flowers. Okay, I might be gilding the lily, but what the hey? Come on, look how great that looks. Just to add a little brightness and a bit of spring to this amazing spring painting. How phenomenal is that? I ask you, how much would you pay for that in a restaurant? You'd pay a lot, right? Let me taste it for you. A little bit of fat, a little bit of acid, beautiful rice, spring vegetables. Hello. Wow. It is the absolute perfect mouthful. It's creamy. You get that cheese, you get a little bit of the acidity, but then at the same time, it's this fresh spring mouthful. You cannot believe how good rice and vegetables are when made this way. Thank you so much for joining me again from the Quarantine Kitchen, making this beautiful spring vegetable risotto. Hope you love it. Please send me your thoughts. Thumbs up. Got to give this a thumbs up. Let me know what you want me to make. I'll see you soon.